was in the ICU for a bit. So I was a young guy there, right? I was in my early 20s. So I saw nurses crying and yeah, I thought I was going to die. Uh, everybody thought I was going to die. Hey guys, I'm Siobhan, a fourth year medical resident specializing in rheumatology. Today, we're talking about how your skin color can affect the health care you receive. Now, I realize this is a big, complex topic. So today, we're focusing on rashes. And you'll see how a classic lupus rash can be missed when it's on dark skin. This is Mustafa. He's an inspiring man whose life was turned upside down when he was diagnosed with lupus at the age of 22. And this is his sister, Teresa. She's a resident doctor like me, a future rheumatologist, and a friend of mine. Before he got sick, Mustafa was the picture of health. I was playing football all throughout high school, uh, college, and university. I was also in the military, so it was quite a shock to get this diagnosis because I, have, I had nothing that would show that I, I should be sick. I remember the one thing that would annoy me about him was just how much energy he had. You know, he's the type of person, he'd just be on his headphones, walking around, pacing. Um, so that's just a, a feature of who he is at baseline. Then during exam time at university, he started to feel different and he actually started to hallucinate. And, um, I wasn't sleeping very much. And uh, so I ended up going to the ER said I had a psychotic episode. However, um, a lot of other students were there at the same time. So obviously just stress, not sleeping, exam time. And uh, then they did a uh, MRI and saw I had a small stroke. Doctors would later realize that this was actually his first major symptom of lupus, something called neuropsychiatric lupus, where there's inflammation in the brain. You know, within a month, I was good to go and carry on with the rest of my life. And that's when I went to East Africa. And uh, there not, I presented with tremendous rashes all over my uh, um, arms. They looked like, I don't know, boils. They were, they were kind of um, like a light brown. And it was all over, like bubbly all over my, my arms. It was my first exposure to the East African strong sun. So that's maybe, that's all. I, I thought I got a sunburn for the first time in my life. In hindsight, this was another important clue for his diagnosis. Lupus patients are very sensitive to the sun and can develop a severe rash within minutes of sun exposure. But we really started to notice um, how unwell he was when he returned. Mustafa kept feeling weak and tired. So he went to his family doctor who did blood work and that showed that he was anemic. They also found that he was spilling protein into his urine, which was abnormal. And then I kept going uh, to see the family doctor again, as well as uh, going to the ER. And I was just, you know, dismissed. People just didn't really know what was going on. And the funny thing is, is that uh, when I said I went to East Africa, they said, oh, maybe you have malaria. And they gave me uh, some anti-malarials. This is an incredible coincidence. Mustafa was treated for the parasitic infection, malaria. And that could explain his symptoms, anemia, fatigue, and protein in his urine. It just so happens that anti-malarial medications are also used to treat lupus. So that's probably why he started to feel a bit better. But that didn't last for long. He was in bed all the time. He did not want to get out of bed. His energy levels went from 100 to zero. So all of us could, could recognize that there was something wrong. We just didn't know exactly what was wrong. I looked at my dad, I was at home and I felt really sick. And uh, so I said, I looked at my dad, I'm like, dad, uh, I need to go to the hospital. And he had this look on his face and uh, he's like, okay, we need to go. We need to go now. It was kind of fuzzy because, you know, I was tremendously sick. And uh, so we ended up going to the, to the hospital and I was admitted pretty fast. Yeah, it was quite terrifying because, you know, you see someone who's very young, energetic, they're athletic. He's essentially, to me, he was like Superman, like nothing could touch my brother. At the age of 22, Mustafa was admitted to hospital with kidney failure, high fevers, and a rash that nobody recognized. The initial investigations done by the medical team showed multiple organs were involved. His blood counts were low, imaging showed enlarged lymph nodes, and there was fluid around his heart. 
His urine test showed high levels of blood and protein, suggesting inflammation in the kidneys. And he had a very swollen, painful knee, making it difficult for him to walk. Based on his symptoms, there were still quite a few possible diagnoses. Could be an infection, autoimmune disease, sickle cell disease, or even cancer. So he was seen by multiple specialists who ordered even more blood work until they finally came up with a diagnosis. I just remember waiting until the weekend and the doctors came in and had this scary look on their face and I didn't know what was going on. And they said, yeah, you have lupus. And I'm like, lupus, the heck is that? They told us that, you know, after examining him, that perhaps he did have this rash that was typical for lupus. And it just looks different than it does on people with like lighter complexion. Uh, so presumably that was the malar rash. The butterfly rash, or the malar rash that comes over the cheeks and nose, is the most visible symptom of lupus. And I can't help but wonder if Mustafa would have been diagnosed earlier if someone had recognized what the rash looked like on dark skin. I think so, because I've talked to other lupus patients and they have this clear red malar rash on their face that's like so clear and it's like, boom, someone comes in, that's lupus. Lupus is a chronic, lifelong disease that causes pain and inflammation in any part of the body. This makes it really difficult to diagnose because it can cause almost any symptom and there isn't just one test to diagnose lupus. Instead, we've got to fit together the right symptoms with the right blood work. Here's the classification criteria for lupus and you can see how many of these symptoms most of her had. He had fever, anemia, psychosis in the past, butterfly rash in his face, inflammation around the heart, arthritis, kidney disease, and specific antibodies for lupus in his blood. And look at how many points the malar rash is worth. Six points, just as much as the specific antibody testing. And patients walk in with a rash. They don't usually walk in with blood work results, so it's really important to recognize it. Why wasn't Mustafa's rash diagnosed earlier? It could be because he's a man and lupus primarily affects women. 90% of lupus patients are women. It could also be because physicians are less comfortable diagnosing rashes on people of color. And lupus affects people of color two to three times more than Caucasian people. And yet, on the internet and in medical textbooks, you overwhelmingly see these bright red rashes on white skin. This is really important because a lot of dermatology is pattern recognition. And in medical school, you just keep looking at photos and photos and photos, drilling it into your mind. But if those photos don't show diversity, then it can impact your ability to diagnose patients. I actually wanted to show you a photo of a malar rash on white skin compared to dark skin so you could see the difference. And although there are some published photos available, I couldn't find a copyright free image, which may tie into the reason why doctors didn't recognize Mustafa's rash. They're just not shown as often. This is not an issue limited to lupus. A 2011 US survey found that almost half of dermatologists didn't feel confident treating rashes and skin disease in people of color. And those are dermatologists who specialize in the skin. What about emergency doctors or primary care providers who are usually the first people you encounter in the healthcare system? We can do better. We need to make sure that medical students and doctors are trained to be able to recognize rashes on all types of skin. What kind of advice would you give to physicians moving forward when they're looking after a patient of a minority, um, black patients or others? Be humble and recognize that you're not going to be the expert up front. But if you're humble and you're open to learning, this diverse population will grow based off the experiences that you have. That's fantastic. I really believe that Teresa's advice applies to everyone, not just healthcare providers. So here's my challenge to you. Next time you meet someone who seems different than you, whether that's their appearance or their beliefs, try to stay curious and learn something about them. Whether you're a high school student or a university professor, we can all learn from each other. And change is already happening around us. Malone McQuende is a medical student at the University of London, and he created a handbook of clinical signs in brown and black skin. At the University of California, there's a new skin and color clinic. And Ellen Weiss created an Instagram and website called Brown Skin Matters, where photos are reviewed by physicians. 
it's definitely worth checking out. Okay, back to Mustafa's story. He's in the hospital and was just diagnosed with lupus. Despite having a diagnosis, Mustafa stayed in hospital and kept getting sicker. And because of his kidney failure, his blood pressure skyrocketed and he had to get transferred to the intensive care unit for closer monitoring. Yeah, I thought I was gonna die. Uh, everybody thought I was gonna die. I was in the ICU for a bit, so I saw nurses crying and you know, you see emotion, the emotion of physicians, like their reaction where you just see the humanity. Uh, Cause I, I was a young guy there, right? I was in my early twenties, so you know, I was kind of like a kid in there in a way because everybody's family older. After almost three months in the hospital, getting high doses of immunosuppression, having anaphylactic allergies to medications, and even getting shingles in his eye, Mustafa was finally ready to go home. And then I remember when I was getting out of the hospital, a resident, I'll never forget, he said, before you leave, I have to talk to you. And he kept bugging me the whole day to say, don't leave without talking to me. And I was about, I was just trying to get the heck out of there as fast as possible. I didn't care. And I think he knew that too. And he told me, he's like, listen, it's gonna take time to get better. These medicines are not gonna work quickly. You have to understand, you have to be patient. And, you know, I didn't really know what he was talking about back then, but, you know, five years after I was diagnosed, my whole life, like, turn around. I bought a home, I had a fancy sports car. I felt like a superhero. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I always remembered, yeah, it takes time. Now I have a partner, you know, like life is amazing. Like I never thought like these things, going back to when I first diagnosed, crying every night, like life is over. I'm gonna be living with my parents for the rest of my life. I'm never gonna be anybody never gonna get a job like now I'm here yakking on on a zoom call <laughs> with you I am so grateful to Mustafa and Teresa for sharing their story it's really allowed me to take a step back and, and wonder what can I do better and so I've decided that for any future presentation that I give when I'm showing a rash I'm always gonna show it on white skin and on dark skin what about you did you learn something is there some sort of change that you can commit to? Rashes and skin color are just one small part of a much larger conversation about equity in healthcare. And I'm really interested to hear your thoughts, so let me know in the comments below. If you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to subscribe and I'll see you in the next video. Bye for now!